Does the Super Nintendo really need any kind of introduction? It's the sequel to the Nintendo Entertainment System. I think we all know that. Several hundred fantastic games were released for it, so let's just get to the list, shall we? Contra 3 The Alien Wars. This is the explosive sequel to the Contra games that were on NES. And what can be said about Contra 3 other than shoot alien, have fun, die a lot? Contra 3 was a game I actually picked up very fairly recently, and I've beaten it quite a few times at this point, though without that 50 extra live code, there's honestly no way I could have done it. <laughs> If you're looking for a fun, fast-paced, and adrenaline-fueled, but frustrating action, then there's no better place to live than Contra 3. However, those overhead levels really suck. Is Super Mario Kart just too slow for you? Then how about blasting over oceans and cityscapes going over 500 miles per hour? F-Zero was the explosive debut of Captain Falcon! who, which we all know today, as the incredibly fast and powerful falcon-punching maniac from Super Smash Bros. However, he of course got to start here. The first F-Zero game can be a little hard to master in terms of the controls, but once you get it down, it is non-stop fun from beginning to end. The games that would follow would do nothing but improve on the formula that the original started, especially F-Zero GX, and you know, I just can't wait for the inevitable Nintendo Switch version to be announced. Alright, now if you thought Contra 3 was fast-paced, you haven't seen anything yet. Mega Man X picked up where Mega Man 5 on the NES left off and took its gameplay and cranked it up to 11! The boss fights, the setting, the special weapon, the badass upgrades you can get, and obviously the soundtrack make this my favorite Mega Man X game out of all of them. Yeah, you know, it might be cliche to say that the first is the best, but that's how I feel. Now, the game is only number 8 on this list because I didn't grow up playing this game. I don't have that much emotional attachment to it. I only recently learned how I really felt about it. Like, I've, I've always known about it, I always knew this is a good game but up until recently, I never discovered that for myself. However, it's still awesome, and you should check it out regardless of where I placed it here. So, yeah, it's still a great game. I like this game more than I do like Mega Man X, but for different reasons. When I went to speed through levels, knocking out robots and jamming to awesome metal tunes, I play X. When I want to relax and play through a colorful, energetic, and fun romp through grassy fields, caves, and different planets, I'll play Kirby. Even though the remake on the Nintendo DS would grow to become my favorite and go-to version to play nowadays, I somehow find the original more charming. The music is catchy, but also very atmospheric. The gameplay is addictive, and everything is just so fun to look at. You know, if I can sum up this game in one word, I'd say fun. Now we're really getting into the good stuff. Super Mario RPG was the first RPG I ever played. I didn't understand the controls, I didn't know why I couldn't just jump on enemies, and I didn't understand what RPG meant. It didn't help that when I was younger I had trouble reading and understanding big plots too. I also played this game on a tiny black and white TV, which also didn't help my lack of overall game sense. I put it down and forgot about it until I was in junior high when I discovered the Wii's virtual console and I suddenly had access to all the old games I used to play when I was but a wee little child. I could go over the Wii's virtual console and everything else in a whole separate video but wow was it amazing to me when I was a kid. All kinds of old games, new ones that I hadn't discovered yet, oh it was amazing. But Super Mario RPG, that was the first game I tried out. I downloaded it and just, I just loved it. 
It has become one of my favorite games, period. Not even one of my favorite Super Nintendo games, my favorite games of all time. From the characters, the writing, the amazing attack animations, the delightful soundtrack, and of course the setting, this version of the Mushroom Kingdom is one of my overall favorites. All the unique races like the mole people, or how all the toads have really distinct designs like old people or young people or children toads that want to marry Mario for some reason, to all the weird enemies that shouldn't fit in the Mario universe but somehow still do. That's just the magic of this game. A beautiful partnership between Nintendo and Squaresoft. It gave birth to this amazing game. And you know, Super Mario RPG, I can confidently say, should be your first RPG. It's just that good. It is almost Halloween after all. I would like to thank my dad for getting me into the Castlevania series when I was a freshman in high school, even though I thought they were the hardest games I've ever played in my life. This game, however, takes the original 8-bit trilogy, buries it, and dances on their graves. Being a remake of the original game, it takes full advantage of its spooky setting and really shows off what the Super Nintendo was capable of in its early life. It's really the little things that make this game so good to me. While the music is the first thing that comes to mind like many people, like the legendary theme of Simon Belmont, I think the minor things like moonwalking upstairs, doing that little whip twirl thing, and having the convenience of the many buttons the Super Nintendo controller has, just to help the gameplay. There's really not much I can say about this game that other people haven't already, so I'll keep it short. This game is the pinnacle of the original Castlevania. Anyone that knows me knows how big of an Earthbound fan I am. There's really not even that much I can say about this game. Ness is most well known for being top tier in Super Smash Bros. And much like Captain Falcon, that's where people heard of him the most. See, the console I played when I was a kid, other than my Super Nintendo, was my GameCube, which was given to me along with a copy of Smash Bros. Melee for Christmas. I liked pretty much every character, but Ness always stuck out to me. Especially when I read his trophy description, a Super Nintendo game that I somehow didn't play? I had to learn more! I couldn't find it on the Wii's Virtual Console. Where is it? Years pass, and now I'm probably one of the biggest fans of this game that I know of. I always try to make an effort to play through not only this game, but the entire Mother trilogy at least once a year. This game is special to me. I've memorized so many lines, music tracks, enemy character names. The game itself is an RPG where you travel as Ness and his three friends, Paula, Jeff, and Pooh, who go around the world trying to collect the eight sacred melodies to stop the evil Gaius from taking over the entire world. The enemies you fight, the world you travel in, everything is just bizarre from start to finish. It's really an experience, and I can't recommend it enough. Though, do yourself a favor and pick it up on the SNES Classic, because a physical copy of this game is pretty much impossible to find for cheap these days. You are not getting it physical, unless you're a real diehard collector and have very disposable income. So, yeah, go play Earthbound. You know, in fact, pause the video right now and go play the entire game and come back once you finish. I'll wait for you. It was good, right? See? What did I tell you? Are you guys ready to go ape? Donkey Kong Country is a game that I have so many memories with. My sisters and I would spend hours up past our bedtime playing this, always doing stupid shit like getting hit on purpose just to see DK's animation, or just swinging around the ropes on Roby Rampage. There was something special to me about this game. It sparked my interest in gaming as a whole. It wasn't just a video game. Everything felt real to me. The rainstorms, they felt real. The beautiful sunsets felt real. DK, Diddy, Cranky, Funky, they all looked and felt real. 
I think for a while I actually convinced myself that DK Isle was a real world location and that this game was just inspired by it. Sure, I had no idea at the time that Cranky was the original Donkey Kong, or that there was even an arcade game after all. I just thought his funny speeches were just that, funny speeches. I thought it was a fun adventure, and to me that's what it always will be. And there will never be anything more tear-jerkingly nostalgic than hearing that Rareware logo appear. So, I want you to find this game and play it loud! Yeah, it's time for the legend to come and be told. A Link to the Past is a game I can confidently say is what made me not only a Zelda fan, but a Nintendo fan. Just from playing this game, as a kid, I knew that if I saw the Nintendo logo on something, it would be good. In fact, when someone asked me what, the, what makes me think of the Super Nintendo and what it means to me, I tell them this game. Not even so much for the gameplay or music, but for the sound effects. The chime of collecting a rupee or solving a puzzle is just so Super Nintendo to me. Don't you feel it too? As soon as you hear a sound effect, you just think, yeah, that's from the Super Nintendo. That, ma that brings me back. But that is without saying the opening theme always brings a tear to my eye. This is probably the most special game of all time to me. My dad and I bonded over this game time and time again, and just thinking about those moments brings a tear to my eye. We'd always replay the game, trying to die as few times as possible. I'd make him get the Pegasus boots just so I could chase the turkey in the Flute Boy's Grove. We'd get the shovel and dig everywhere looking for rupees and other treasures. We'd give unique names to all the enemies. We always cheered whenever we found the red boomerang for some reason. And I remember giving him the controller just for the boss fights because I couldn't do them. I remember one time I played the game, I tried to very stealthily get the Master Sword and all the pendants. Thinking that if I was somehow careful enough and didn't let any enemies see me, that Princess Zelda somehow wouldn't get captured. Of course, now I know that that's not how it works, but to me, I was a young kid and I thought the adventure was real. I thought if I really did it without getting seen, no one would know that Link was even on this adventure. They wouldn't know to look for Princess Zelda. However, no moment in my life will ever be more special to me than my dad making me fight Aghanim in his tower by myself and me beating him on my first try with only half a heart left. We fought Ganon together, and I cried when I found the Triforce. The music to me felt like an actual orchestra was playing for me as I ventured through this amazing world. We had already played the original NES Zelda before this one, and we have a lot of fun with that, and we still play that game once a year too. But to me, when I, as soon as I heard the Overworld theme for the first time after stepping out of the church, I knew this was the better game. Everything about it, it just looked, it sounded better, it felt better. Everything about this game was just better. I used to sit by in the fields doing nothing but watching the flowers move in the wind, or cutting the grass, or trying to dash into every tree and bomb every wall looking for secrets. Hyrule felt like a living, breathing world that needed my help. Every year, me and my dad come back and play this game, usually around winter time for some reason, and we still reminisce about the old times we had, and we even invent new ones. But I know what you're thinking. If A Link to the Past is that special to me, what could possibly top it? Before I reveal number one, I'd like to give out some honorable mentions. First goes out to Chrono Trigger. This is a game I only recently started playing a few months back, and honestly, I really wish I played it sooner. If I hadn't already like written a script for this episode and spent time playing each and every one of these games on the list, I would have easily put the game on here, easily in my top three spots. From the characters, the setting, the way it uses time travel, and the godly music, Chrono Trigger is a must-play RPG and a must-play game for the Super Nintendo, the DS, or the PS1. Whatever platform you find it on, play it. It's that good.
My next very honorable mention comes from my very first top tier Patreon supporter, Mr. Meyer Lurking. When you subscribe to my higher tier Patreons, you get access to videos while I'm still writing them, and you get to see them before anyone else when they're done. Not only that, but you get to give your input on the topic. You also get your special section of the video where I express the opinions that you've given. So, on the topic of favorite Super Nintendo games, Mr. Meyer Lurking had this to say. But, with all that out of the way, let's get to the one game that can personally be a link to the past. This was the very first video game I have ever played. When I was in kindergarten, I would come home every day and play this. When I was a kid, I had my Super Nintendo until I was in about 5th grade. I had this game, Donkey Kong Country, A Link to the Past, Bob the Robot, and Super Black Bass Fishing. Very diverse library of games, huh? But Super Mario All-Stars plus Super Mario World was the very first video game I ever played. This was the game that brought me and my sisters close together at a young age. Staying up late, eating pizza while trying to beat Mario 2 was a very frequent effort. We often called Fire Flowers Flower Power, and sometimes still do to this day. I remember my cousins coming over, and we'd all take turns trying to beat Mario 3, but for some reason never got past World 4. I think the most fun we ever had was just messing with Birdo and trying to steal her bow and throw eggs at her. And I still remember trying to tell one of my sisters that she had to get the mushroom to get more health, and her telling me, I'm not eating no mushrooms, those things are gross, as if she actually had to eat it. My dad would play with us whenever he got off work, and he liked Mario 1 the best since he grew up playing the 8-bit ori original. Whenever there was an underground level, we'd always go, Vito, 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 in time with the track. And it's silly, yeah, but it's just something we did. This game holds a very, very special place in my heart, above all the rest, for the memories attached to it alone. But as for the games themselves, oh, they're just great. Super Mario Bros. 1 through 3 and the Lost Levels, beautifully remastered in 16-bit, along with Super Mario World? It was amazing! I think Mario 1 benefited the most from the step up because it was just more fun to play. The controls and the physics of the 8-bit original just aren't as fun to play these days. But this version completely removes those issues. The 16-bit makeover made every world feel very unique. The music they added for boss fights, bonus rooms, and the added levels make this the definitive version to play. Mario 2 benefited from the added graphical flair and more delightful music. Mario 3 though? Oh baby. If you had told me this game was just a remake of Mario 3, I wouldn't have any issues with it. Super Mario Bros. 3 to me is even better than Mario World in terms of level variety, power-ups, the soundtrack, and the level design itself. Everything about that game only improved with the jump to 16-bit, and I can't stress that enough. This really is the most special game to me, probably of all time, and I don't think anything will ever top it. Well, that's just all I have to say on that. Do you agree with my list? Do you not? Put your own list or your own opinions in the comments below, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Special thanks to my top tier Patreon, Mr. Meyer Lurking, for supporting the show. And I hope to add many more names to that list in the future, but for now, I'll catch you guys later.